Power Through Prayer by Ian Bounds. Chapter 14, Unction and Necessity. One bright benison which private prayer brings down upon the minister is an indescribable and inimitable something, an unction from the Holy One. If the anointing which we bear come not from the Lord of hosts, we are deceivers, since only in prayer can we obtain it. Let us continue instant, constant, fever, and supplication. Let your fleece lie on the threshing floor of supplication till it is wet with the dew of heaven. Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Alexander Knox, a Christian philosopher of the days of Wesley, not an adherent, but a strong personal friend of Wesley, and with much spiritual sympathy with the Wesleyan movement, writes, It is a strange and lamentable, but I verily believe the fact to be that except among Methodists and Methodical clergymen, there is not much interest, interesting preaching in England. The clergy, too, generally have absolutely lost the art. There is, I conceive, in the great laws of the moral world, a kind of secret understanding like the affinities in chemistry between rightly uh, promulgated religious truths and deepest feelings of the human mind. Where the one is duly exhibited, the other will respond. Did not our hearts burn within us? But to this devout feeling is indispensable in the speaker. Now I am obliged to state from my own observation that this unction, as the French not unfitly termed it, is beyond all comparison more likely to be found in England in a Methodist conventional than in a parish uh, church. This, this alone seems really to be that which fills the Methodist houses and thins the churches. I am, I verily think, no enthusiast. I am a most sincere and cordial churchman, a humble dis- disciple of the Church of Hell and Boys, of Burnet and Lathan. Now I must avert that when I was in the country two years ago, I did not hear a single preacher who taught me like my own great masters, but such as are deemed Methodists. And I now despair of getting an atom of hard instruction from any other quarter. The Methodist preachers, however, I may not always approve of their expressions, do most assuredly diffuse this true religion in undefiled. I feel real pleasure last Sunday. I can bear witness that the preacher did at once speak the words of truth and soberness. There was no eloquency. The honest man never dreamed of such a thing. But there was a far better cordial communication of vitalized truth. I say vitalized because what he declared to others, it was impossible not to feel he lived on himself. This unction is the art of preaching. The preacher who never had this unction never had the art of preaching. The preacher who has lost this unction has lost the art of preaching. Whatever other arts he may have or retain, the art of sermon making, the art of eloquency, the art of great clear thinking, the art of pleasing an audience. He has lost the divine art of preaching. This unction makes God's truth powerful and interesting, draws and attracts, edifies, convicts, and saves. This unction vitalizes God's revealed truth, makes it living and life-giving. Even God's truth, spoken without this unction, is light, dead, and deadening. Though abounding in truth, though weighty with thought, Though sparkling with rhetoric, though pointed with logic, though powerful by earnestness, without this divine unction, it issues in death and not in life. Mr. Spurgeon says, I wonder how long we might beat our brains before we could plainly put into word what is meant by preaching with unction. Yet he who preaches knows its presence, and he who hears soon detects its absence. Samaria and famine typifies a discourse without it. Jerusalem, with her feast of fat things, full of moral, may represent a sermon enriched with it. Everyone knows that the freshness of the morning is when the oriental pearls abound on every blade of grass, but who can describe it, much less produce of it itself? Such is the misery of spiritual anointing. We know, but we cannot tell to others what it is. It is as easy as it is foolish to counterfeit it. Unction is a thing which you cannot manufacture, and its counterfeits are worse than worthless. Yet it is, in itself, priceless and beyond measure needful, if you would edify believers and bring sinners to Christ. End of chapter 14, having been read by Peter John Parises.